Alright, salam to Nah. And I salam. Salam. Shalom. Senbet salam. Let's get in here. Let's go in here. Okay, this is I9 desktop right here. Part of I9 desktop. And we wanted to. That we're still in the 40th sabbatical Sabbath for a portion that's known as Balak. The Balak portion right here. Okay, this is from. Um, a previous search and let's bring up this page we mentioned this in in part one and part two and see if we can get a uh, get this straight over here let's bring this over here like this so we can uh, the heart of Balaam I thought this is very interesting this is from a website that's known as uh, 27 uh, Two seven dot dot or two seven uh, on the no sorry sorry uh, revelation two seven right dot org okay let's see if we can bring this a little more front and center okay are you seeing it well okay so here we go here we go this is what we said we had to present part of this week's um, Biblical reading and feeding, and this is the article right here. This is the article right here. Let's see if we can get a little zoom out, a little zoom out on this. Let's zoom out, take it to 75%. Uh, let's see if we can take it to about 50%. All right, 50%. Okay, there we go. So this is this is called um, this is chapter chapter 11. Right, chapter 11 on the nature, right, on the nature and the mark of the beast, and in parenthesis, open parenthesis, the number 660 and 6, and the office of the President of the United, the United or as Romney says, the Nutter States, the Nutter States, United States. Daniel chapter 4, according to the King James Version of the Bible, all right? This particular article that's found at the website, hopefully the website is still there, but we've been able to back up a lot of the, most of what was up there at the time, the last time we backed it up. Um, Revelation27.org. Or you can just look up this particular article right here, put chapter XI for 11 on the nature and the mark of the beast. And if you Google it, as they say today, you should be able to find it out there, all right? Okay, so we want to make this like a, a visual presentation right here, some of the visuals. And as you see this right here, this is the... This is the um, the course of creation, the cycle of life, the, the, the signs, but the seasons. But if you study it, it's in context. It says, let them grow until the harvest. Matthew chapter 13 and 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. That's from one of the preliminary, the first parables, which are also expounded on, or Yeshua, Jesus gives the fakare. He gives the explication thereof, the explanation thereof to his Deca Mesamorit, to the disciples. Now, Revelation 13 and 1, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea. So this is where this part really begins, a beast rising out of the sea. Now, the article is really worthy of all study. And there's other articles also here, you know, um, have I, uh, are ye not as the children of Ethiopians unto me? That particular article that we also have on our study page in a PDF form. And perhaps more of this we need to PDF eyes and, and put out there. But here's why we're going into this in this particular Torah portion. Let's scroll through this right here and um, let us look at some of, the, some, of the, some of the pictures right here. Very, 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 very interesting. The love of what? Money is the root of what? All evil. The love of money, right? 
Okay. Now here we go right here. Right? Here we go right here. Now let's just get a little before this is inserted and read up here. It says, um, it says, uh, in all these things, the scriptures, the Bible, the Metzhoth, Kedus, the Holy Scriptures, the Torah, the Tanakh, if you please, are finally referring to the American order of things. You see, your, your, your Balaam, or your, your Balaam, your, your, your pastors and your preachers, and even among some of your rabbis or your rabbis and the rest of them, they're not telling you the fullness of this. You know what I'm They're telling you everything is happy, happy, go lucky, and God bless America. Well, yes, he has, but not in the way that you have been told. Because of we, the once lost but now found black sheep of the family, the Beta Israel, has America been blessed. But when we look at the scriptures, they are finally referring to the American order of things and of those religious leaders. We're speaking about the preachers and the prophets of Baal. The preachers and the prophets of Baal. And if you can um, move this over here, you'll see where it says the preachers and the prophets of Baal. All right? On both the right and the left. On both the Jewish and the Christian side of the tree. The tree. The tree of life. Right? Or one might say the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Perhaps this is the tree, the very same tree, the old thing that Moses explicated. They uphold and they defend this particular, this particular order, this particular world order, which you can say is cows. You understand? Um, or order out of order of cows, order out of chaos. They're the ones who are constantly binding the intellect that's seeking to bind up other people's thought processes, you know what I'm saying, an intellect, you know what I'm saying, and the spirit of others, bind up one's spirit or one's souls, you can say, to the standards and to the world view. There's a particular world view of this fallen order with their grand speeches and all of their enticing sermons, you understand that we see these are the pastors and the preachers. This right here is so very interesting because here in Judges, Judges 6, verses 31 to 34, we find, Will ye plead for Baal? Baal? Will you plead for Baal? Do you know who Baal is? It's no wonder they have the what the Kahin Baal, right? Which you know the Kahin Baal. You know the Kahin Baal, right? The Kohen Baal. You know who the Kohen Baal is the cannibal. The cannibal. You understand the cannibal? What does the cannibal do? It eats human beings. It eats people. You understand? This is why there's so much death and destruction because the Kahin Baal that these counterfeit pastors and preachers plead for, you understand this why it says, will ye plead for Baal, Baal? Now notice this right here. Right here it says, all the ways and the statutes and the commandments of who? Of what's in here. They say this is God. You see the G back here? You see the O right here? You see the D coming out right there? What do we have here? We have... Seven circles, right? Seven circles. We have, over here, we have Assyria, right? We have Egypt. We have Rome. We have Greece, Grecia, or Gracia, Grecia, Gracia. We have Persia, which is modern day Iran, Uran, Hiran, Iran. And then you have Babylon. You have Babylon over here. But then right here, what do we have in the center right here? It's not so clear, and let's see if we can get a little larger. Let's, let's zoom in. Maguia, Maguia. You see it a little better right here? It says, the, the holy Napoleano, or Napoleano, Romanism. Romanism is right here in the heart and the center. Now, look at this carefully. 
And, and what does this remind you of? It should remind you of the, what is it, the obverse or the reverse um, with the five, with the six-pointed star on, on the dollar bill. Dollar bill, y'all. Get out your dollar bill, your one dollar bill, y'all, and look at the, the, the reverse. What is the reverse? Look at the reverse or look at the back of the dollar. Look at the back of your dollar. And then look, I think it's above the eagle. What will you see? If you draw a six-pointed star, if we go eh, this from Babylon to Egypt to Greece and, and across from Babylon to Greece, right, you see this triangle, an upward triangle, we're drawing it right here, right? And then if you take this, Assyria to Rome to Persia, and you draw a downward one, right, it's like the, the six-pointed star, the hexagram, the hexagram, right? Penta, penta means send. Right? The penta sent. Right? To repent, resend. Right? Or one could say even resend. Resend, right? And then we have the hex. The hex fixes. Right? If you look at a six pointed star, there are seven places or spaces. And in the center is the seventh. Now, you see what's in the center of all of this? Now, in, in the scriptures, it talks about a, a beast. A dragon, right? That has how many heads? That has seven heads. Now, how does this all connect for Baal, for Baal? You understand? And and what does Baal or Baal really connect with? Well, here we once again give thanks to this Revelation two seven, article chapter eleven, the name, the nature, and the name of the beast. America, the overs, America. America, God shed his grace on thee. Right? God shed his what? Grace is the grace. God shed his grace. But Satan, Diablo, he fell from what? He fell from grace. See, in the Bible, it warns us. Now, you have people that say, once saved, always saved. Well, you know, if, if that be your faith, then so be it. Then, you know, do the things that, you know, bear the fruit. Bear the good fruit. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like a leafy green fig tree, like that tree that Christ will curse, because when he comes to get fruit, there's no fruit there. But this is what they plead for. This is the God of the world. This is the God, and this is the heart of Balaam. Now, notice... The Numbers chapter 22 to 24, which is this 40th Torah portion. This 40th Torah portion or Padasha that's known as Balak. Balak. Now, there's some other quotes here. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 23 to verse 26. Take notes of it. Take good notes of it. Look that up. Put it down in your notes so you can look it up later. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 23 to verse 26. Then you have Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 18. Now over here, we have Matthew chapter 15, verse 9. We have Colossians chapter 2, verses 2, 2. And then we have Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to verse 8. All right? Now, we have the heart of Balaam. And so when you hear people say in the world, you know, oh, I know this person's heart. How do you know their heart? Well, I guess they have the heart of Balaam. Because the Bible says that the heart is what? Desperately wicked. Who can know it? But they, they go around and like they know each other's heart. Because you have to recognize the heart also in these sacrifices. Both the physical heart, but then even the metaphysical interpretation of the heart. You open the heart, the feelings, the consciousness, the emotion, the thoughts, the will. You understand? The will. That's why it says right here, but in vain, but in vain do they worship me. Christos Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, is saying, this is a quote from Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, but in vain, but in vain, in worthlessness, in uselessness, do they worship me? Who's the me in that context? It is Yeshua. Who is Yeshua? Is the Jesus. Who is the Jesus to the Gentiles? It is Jesus. Right? So Jesus is saying, 
in vain, but in vain. However, on the other hand, in vain, in vanity, do they worship me. And now let's look around at the world. Can we see that there is a vanity worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMoshiach? Teaching what? What do they teach? Teaching for doctrines, doctrines, notice what they teach for their doctrines. That's why one so-called Christian church, especially in Babylon, especially of, of, of the daughters of Babylon, because they are daughters of Babylon, you know, the ones that are into the Sunday so-called only worship, you know, the Sunday only, they got that from the Pope. You know, and they don't keep the Sabbath, although they acknowledge that the Sabbath is in the Bible. You understand? But they make it their own Sabbath whenever they want because, after all, they're their own gods. That's why Christ says, but in vain do they worship me. Teaching for doctrines, I like to say duck train, you know, but teaching, quack, 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 teaching for doctrines, in other words, teachings, they teach the teaching that they teach in the majority of these so-called pseudo-Christian churches are a 180 degree opposite of what you will find in your B-I-B-L-E. So it shouldn't surprise you now that they have like woman bishops and you know and, 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 and gay or homosexual churches and a lot of y'all, well not a lot of y'all, some of y'all might be into that. But let's recognize the truth first of all. You know, and then we can decide, you know, about everything else. We need to know what the truth is. Remember what the scripture says in Thessalonians? Some of them don't have a, they have not received the love for the truth. So God does what to them? He sends on them a strong delusion. And what happens then? Then they believe a lie. So if you wonder why you ain't getting through to some folks about the truth, then, then let's recognize that. Don't hate on them, but recognize that. But be ye separate. Be ye caduce as he is caduce, as Abba caduce is caduce, make I and I caduce, so that it is caduce, caduce, caduce. But Christ says that they teach for doctrines the what? The commandments of men. What men and people were in my church and my tradition, and this is the way that we've been doing it. But, 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 but right here, um, is that Jesus? That's Jesus, right? Jesus Christ, he says, oh, 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 just, you, uh, a lot of people pick up the Bible, and you think you know the Bible. Or you, you know, you have to live this. It's not about reading the Word. It's not about just talking the Word. You've got to live this. Live what? And we don't learn. He says, study and show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly doing what? Dividing the word of truth. Now, that means that if they claim to be workmen of God, they're doing God's work, they're doing Christ's work, they're doing the work of the church, you know, they're doing the work of the Lord, you know, the Lord. You know, Christ already rebukes them here. That's why he says, many will say, Lord, Lord. And he says, I'm not Lord. No, no. He would say, he would say um, get away from me, you, you bunch of rebels. You know what I'm saying? You're a bunch of, you, you're a bunch of rebels. You, you, you're lawless. You were out Torah. You have no foundation because you didn't receive any groundation. All you're doing is following the traditions and the customs of men and people. So that verse, that word right there checks them. So when I got into this Torah portion right here, uh, number 40, Rastafari sabbatical study, number 40, the Parsha that's known as Balak, and Balak portion introduces Balaam or Balaam. I began to think about this article again, and I said, wow, this is such an appropriate kind of um, artwork right here that really, really describes it, you know, and that really describes the modern-day Balaam. This is the modern-day Balaam. This is, this is the image of the modern-day Balaam. And, and, and notice that right here again. You can put a six-pointed star right here with these seven. But well, these seven... You understand, figuratively speaking, are these same kingdoms or can represent these seven heads of the beast. And what's so interesting is that all of these places have been in the news and are always in the news. Egypt, we know, is in the news. Syria is in the news. Rome, always in the news. Or Italian or pasta or something like that is always in the news, right? Um, Romanism, well, that's at the center for, for no small reason. American Express has a Roman centurion for its, um, 
for its um, its logo or whatever, one of its logos. Babylon, which is Iraq. Iraq has been heavily, heavily in the news. Persia, you know, you be talking about Persia all the time. That's more than Iran. Greece or Greek or Gracia. You can't forget Gracia or Greece. You know, them Greece, uh, they don't want no austerity. You know, the Europeans are really lazy now. You understand know because it's not so easy for them to palm off their counterfeit Christianity. They have to do their own work. And quite frankly, they're not used to it. Unless it's stealing or murdering or destroying and taking from someone else's culture. You understand? Know this is why these seven are very, very significant, even scripturally. So the question remains true. Will ye plead for bail? Will they continue to plead for bail? Now it says right here, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Memphis Kedus, Ruaha, Kodesh, or Holy Spirit, not ghosts, but that's from old King James Version, perversion, but it's the really Holy Spirit. So they have become, they've been made partakers of the Holy Spirit, not a Holy Ghost. There's no ghost that's holy, the Holy Spirit. It's not Casper, the white supremacy friendly ghost. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about the real, not fantasy. And have tasted of the good word of God and the powers, this is interesting, of the world to come. So they, 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 we're getting taste of the power, the spiritual, the metaphysical, the overcoming power of the world to come. If they shall fall away, this is very interesting, if they shall fall away, you know, if they shall fall away, what will happen to them? Notice what it says right here. It says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, that cometh oft end. We say oft end, but they said oft. That cometh oft upon it. See Deuteronomy chapter 32. And bringeth forth herbs. Herbs. You get that? Herbs. Herbs. John says herbs are good. The world said herbs are bad. So who do you think is right and exact? You know, then who is the blameless creator? Then you recognize that herbs are good. Bring us forth herbs that are meat for them, that are proper for them by whom it is dressed. Receiveth what? Blessings, baraket, burake, to say, from God, from Ha Elohim, Baruchu, blessed be He. But that which beareth what? Thorns. And briars, that which bears thorns and briars, is rejected. Is rejected. It's not respected. It, is, it gets rejected. And is nigh to cursing. Keep this in mind right here, since we're in this particular Torah portion on cursing. Whose end, whose end is to be burnt. Whose end is to be burnt. And that's according to Hebrews chapter 6. Verses four to eight. I was, I was, re I was studying something earlier, in the earliest, in the I forget which particular reading or or, or or document, but it was about the scriptures. It was saying that, you know, the wicked are going to be very surprised at how quickly and suddenly the end of this world system comes. You understand? It's going to really be very amazing. It's going to be a great elation to the mitmanon, to the righteous, to the overcomers. So. The scripture says to us to beware of false prophets, of false prophets. Who are these false prophets? False teachers, pastors, and leaders, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. They are, or they were aligned, right? They were aligned to Rome. They're aligned to Rome. Zoom out a little bit so that so that we can get a, 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 a more, they are aligned to Rome. We can see a little bit better right there. I don't know which one is better, but still, we get this article. We told you what the name of it is, XI or 11, chapter XI, um, the nature and the name of the mark of the beast, something to that effect. It says, beware of false prophets which come, okay, these are aligned. These false prophets and teachers, they're aligned to Rome. They're aligned to the worldly order of things and to all other empires of the earth in the past. They are all now aligned to America. They're all aligned to America. This is why you get in this 
whole um, kumbaya is of all the Gentiles, all the nations. You know, even though they came over from other countries, they, they didn't they have the technology of running water. But now they're even more higher. They've been raised higher than the lost sheep who've been over here for 400 plus years. And after all, in a very real sense, they are the ones who built this place and therefore blessed this place by their very presence. Now, 1 John, you see the scriptures right here, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 to 26, 2 Peter chapter 2, and the book of Jude is just one chapter, so don't grumble. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. How will you know them by their fruits? Do men gather grapes of thorns? And what are the thorns? It's interesting right here, it's just turning this way, yeah. The thorns are the keys, right, the keys of the world, or thistles. What are thistles? The, the figs of thistles? The figs of thistles are the deceitfulness of riches. That's why they preach in the world, the world hears them. Get rich or die trying. Ain't that something? And people, and people say, yeah, that's right. You see, but, but you, do men gather grapes of thorns of that kind of a consciousness? The cares of this world? What would the world think? You understand? How do I look to the world? You understand? You mean to the damned world? The about to be downstroyed world? How do you look to them who have no hope of entering into the world to come? Though they talk about a new world order, but they cannot enter in? Or figs of thistles, the deceitfulness of riches. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. The qualifier is Jah and his word. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to, to 20. Now he gives some other scriptures here as well, which are kind of interesting, all the connection now to who is Balaam and why does the scripture um, focus, focus on this Balaam in Revelation. It's almost as though, it's almost as though they understood when they wrote it, John of Patmos. There was a certain knowledge that was available to those of their time that only in part is becoming once again available to us with the various different Ethiopic scrolls and scriptures, the Book of Jubilees and Hanok and Gedla Adam and other scriptures and scrolls that was known to the first century uh, Judeo-Christians and black Judeo-Christians. All right, so it is very important for us to spend this time in this study here. This is interesting right here because you can see the great red dragon here is like Europe, the European Union, right? We know they're having bad economic crisis, which you don't think they're just going to, you know, bite the bullet, you know, like, you know, uh, they, say the, they say the beast dies screaming. They die hard. You know, and they die hard. This is why there's this focus, if you look at the dragon, it's focus on Africa. You know, then this focus on Africa right here. You see that ship right there, Zion. You see, Zion really came from here. The lost sheep, you understand, was sold into Sodom and Egypt. You understand, and this is so-called America over here. All right? So there's a big prophetic picture that is right before our eyes. But the prophets of Balaam, the prophets for hire, they don't dare teach this. You understand? They don't dare teach us. If you notice what they're always doing, right? They're always conflict in Persian Gulf leads some evangelists to predict Armageddon. And you can't see this too well, but this article is September 30th, 1990. You, you understand? You know in the Bible where it talks about that there's these false prophets that go to gather everyone to the, the day of the Almighty, the great day of the Almighty. You over now the, the Balaam connection. You know, within Armageddon is Judgment Day coming soon. And those what they focus on right here. They focus on this whole region. There's Syria. There's um, Palestine. There is Mesopotamia. You see this river right here? Euphrates. This is where Balaam, this is where Balaam comes from, right? This is where Balaam actually came from. The Moabites and the Medeanites, they went and got this guy from over here. But even this guy knew of Yahweh. He knew he could not go past Yahweh. 
Why? Because he was only psychical. He was not spiritual. He was only psychical. He was like a lot of psychics. You know what I'm saying? Or, or on that soul level. You know what I'm saying? But still, that is the, you know, for a European or, to be psychical, like the psychics or the psychic phenomena is, is so, it's so highly prized among the, the Europeans and that whole psychic thing. You know what I'm saying? Yet in Africa, among black people, well, we are psychic, and some make a business out of it, like the shamans and, and others, you know, some of them for good, some of them not for good, but we're psychic because we have souls. But not all of the others have souls, and that's, they're spiritual, they're alive, but not having soul, understand that, especially if they're not born again. You understand, know where, where would they get it from? You can't buy it, you can't make soul. That's why they love to study, you know, soul and these kind of things, you know, and study black people, you understand, you know, and, and study living things that either, either have more soul or more potential for soul. This is the old newspaper right here. Um, Winston tells world what we're fighting for, war on Austria and win the war, injunctions to the president. Have things really changed? Have things really changed? But what we don't understand is what is the big picture? Really, what is the big picture? Do you see it right there? Do you see that dragon? Are you able to make out that dragon right there? Can you make out that dragon? Huh? Do, do you see Leviathan? This, this, this page is very, very interesting, and we, you know, we would like to go through it more in detail, but we're just going to give you some, some highlights of this. Reagan says, Econo economy at judgment day. This is 1981. It was in 1981, you know, and you can even see this sunrise. This is called the sunrise edition right there. You know, and so you're already familiar with those things. That's basic. So let's get past some of those elementals. Now, this is another way of, 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 of seeing this, this link with the nations and the empires and the kingdoms and the prophecy. Egypt is at the foundation. Assyria comes next, right? The black Assyrians, right? Babylon comes next. Persia comes next. Gracia or Greece comes next. Rome comes next. And then this pseudonymous Holy Europe. You understand? Holy Europe. Now up here they say Mount Zion because they inherits of all this. That's why there's a missing capstone. That's why even them themselves can't, you know, on the back of their dollar you see the capstone is, is missing. This is the Egypt of the prophets. When the prophets spoke about Egypt, it is a figure of the entire lower, the lower world, the western world. We're also, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, we're also our Lord. Adonenu, Getachin, Egzienne, you understand? Um, our Lord, our Master was crucified. Some of the scriptures also to study along with this, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15 to 17, Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 11 to 16, Amos or Amot chapter 9, verses 8 to 15, Haggai or Haggai chapter 2, verses 7 and verse 22, and um, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 8. You know what I'm saying? But also reads forward to the Ethiopia section right there. Now, this we thought was very interesting, the great whale. You know when it talks about Jonah, that no sign will be given to them, but the sign of Jonah. Let's see if we can um, uh, get this a little bit so you can see the fullness of it. You can see this great whale. That, that's, that's, the United, that's the United States. That's the United, that's the United States. That's the USA. User. That's the user-friendly. You know what I'm saying? Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Who is king of Egypt in this sense? According to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, is the prince of the power of the air, the world ruler. Hmm. Think about it. Thou art like a young lion of the nations, and thou art as a whale in the seas. And thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troublest the waters with thy feet, and foulest their waters. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread, over, spread out my net over thee, 
with a great company of many people. And maybe that's part of why they're so afraid of all this immigration and people coming over here from um, Mexico. You know, but the Mexicans and the, those natives there, this is their land. Let's, let's wake up, recognize right is right. And they shall bring thee up in my net. Why? And they shall bring, you see, so what we see going on is a bigger picture to this whole even immigration thing, especially from the South. You understand? Good things, in a sense, always do come from the South, uh, prophetically speaking, just prophetically speaking. And they shall bring thee up in my net. Then, I, then will I leave thee upon the land. I will cast thee forth upon the open field and cause all the fowls of heaven to remain upon thee. And I will fill the beast of the whole earth with thee. And I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains, mountains symbolic of the kingdoms, the governments, and fill the valley with thy height, according to Ezekiel chapter 32, verses 1 to 5. Now connect that, if you will, with Genesis chapter 15, verses 12 to 16, where it says, Know of a surety, speaking to Abraham. Abraham, in other words, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Where is not theirs? America, America, and shall serve them, shall serve them, and shall afflict them 400 years. Now, how do you want to calculate this? 1492? Okay, 400 years, 1892. The Son of Man, Lich Tafari, Ras Tafari, Kedamari, Haile Shalase. How do you want to account for this? 1530, which is a, a more interesting date, actually, especially from its Ethiopic significance, to 1930, the crowning of the King of Kings. Now, let's just move forward. Or do you want to count it from, from um, How to Make a Slave? Well, the, your, the, 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 the queen of um, England, she was just over here during, during Bush, baby Bush Jr., and she came over here to the Virginia, the Virginia, Jamestown, Virginia colony. That's what the How to Make a Slave thing was uh, actually talking about. And she came over here for that 400 years. So 400 years. So however you account it, time is up. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge, just as he will judge. And after that, after that, they shall come out with great substance. So we have to really overstand the divine order. Some folks are running out of fear. You know, they're making movements out of fear. They need to get their faith right. You understand and overstand the, the, the instructions of our Abba, of our Father. All right, but let's move this forward. Okay, we, we went over that. Okay. This is some other interesting graphs right here in this same particular um, article. It's interesting how the whole Balaam thing all kind of wraps around and connects, you know, and connects here. Notice how they keep the, their view of the world just in this confines. They never go further south down here. It will be Ethiopia. You know, and they always keep it up here. But even up here at one time was ruled and populated and peopled by black people. Uh, you know, when they call things the dark age, they were in ignorance. You understand? And there was others who they don't like to talk about who were ruling. Now, um, let's move on down here, right down here. What is this right here? This is Daniel. Um, this is Daniel chapter 8. My servant, Nebuchadnezzar, um, and which president? This is Woodrow Wilson, um, a profile of the Antichrist, a very interesting very interesting article right there. This is for the mature Bible, Bible um, studiers and disciples. You know, once you get those basics, you know, then, then a lot of this will become very, very much more easier to understand. Once you get the basic matters in order, 660 and 6, you over that right there. All right, um, see how that forms that square right there, or that Merkaba. All right, okay, move it further down to the president. They didn't foresee right here that we would have a, a, a so-called black president, but the black president, he's connected with all these other um, presidents, 
And it's interesting what's right here concerning the president, since this is a part of the, the, the nature and the name, um, the nature and the mark of the beast, you know, um, article. It says down here, it's kind of small, so I'll read it. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 21 and 22. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near to the altar of the Lord. Neither shalt thou set up any image which the Lord thy God hateth. Almost like the uncircumcised um, phalluses, obelisks, like BC and stuff, you know. And he said, I see men as trees walking. And now I see every man clearly. Matthew chapter 8, verse uh, 22 to 25 Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse uh, 20. By their fruits ye shall know them. So we're looking at the presidents right here. Here's George Bush, Ronald Reagan. Look at the fruits. Jimmy Carter, Gerald Ford, Richard Nixon, um, Lyndon Baines Johnson, Kennedy, Eisenhower, Yovacen. There was a potential for change amongst these two right here. Because it was during the time of His Majesty. Because these men, listen, I think there was a slight potential under Nixon, but um, Nixon had a lot of a lot of enemies, you know, even among his own people. You know, he didn't, he didn't like that homosexuality stuff in the Bohemian Grove, and he spoke about the faggoty stuff. And I guess they didn't really like that too much. So we see what happened to Nixon, right? Almost similar in a sense to Clinton, but we're not going to get into all these presidents. Um, Daniel 4, because we're going to look at the precedent. A tree in the midst of the earth, a tree that sprouts and takes root again, Job chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 26. And then we have some other chapters down here, Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 to 9, Job chapter 4, verses 12 to 21, and the wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Um, and I think that's the antiquities he has right there as well of Josephus. It says right here, the image that provokes God to jealousy. There's an image that provokes God to zealousy, right? And then we have some more of the presidents right here. You understand? And uh, Negroes, blacks, and colors feeling very happy about this Obama thing, but, you know, we are living in a strange time. You understand? It's a strange time. Make sure your spiritual house is in order. So here's the article. The chapter... Uh, 11 is on uh, Revelation 2.7 um, dot org site if it's still up there if it's not we'll try to present a PDF on our study page in due time it's on the nature and the mark of the beast so you can put that title right there in your Google and something should probably come up most likely it will lead you directly to this particular article and there's a lot of particulars some things that you might find a little more interesting than others you, that, that will be like a gateway to open up your understanding about this. Um, the tabernacle, the Kabbalah, all out of ancient Tobia. You know, and all these things taken out of our own culture. You know, saying, but now in order to reclaim that which we have lost, we have to recognize who we are. You know, saying, as a once lost but now found Beta Israel. Interesting right here, it says, Meanwhile, Belial, Belial, also known as Belial, also known as Belial, or the prince of the ear, called Belial. Right? There's no accident that those things were done because this, this culture, the devil is pleased with his culture. He'll suppress ours, but he'll promote his at every turn. It says, and this is from um, the Zadogite, the Zadokite document. Meanwhile, Belial, Belial will be rampant in Israel. Right? This is Isaiah 24, I think it's 17. Even as God hath saith through Isaiah, terror and the pit and the trap shall be upon the O inhabitants of the land. Isaiah 24 and 17. These are whoredom, lucra, lucra, money, 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 you know, and desecration. 
you know, perverting the holy. I mean, look how people are the praise and worship and the contemptible gospel. Look what they're doing in the churches right now. You know what I'm saying? Concerning which Levi said that by making them look three kinds of righteousness, Belial ensnares Israel in them. He who escapes the one gets caught in the other. And he who escapes that gets caught in the third. So in other words, in other words, if you escape the whoredom, you know, like some people say, I don't, I don't go out there and be having sex with a whole bunch of people and stuff like that. Huh? So they escape the whoredom, right? This is all connected with Bilal, I mean, I mean, um, Balaam and, and the Baal, right? And See, they don't worship Yeshua, they worship Bar Jesus. Bar Jesus is who they really worship. We'll touch on that or Google it. You know, there's some others out there. Even York has touched on a very interesting interpretation of, of that whole matter of Bar Jesus. You understand? And the mix up that occurred. The whoredom, right? The, uh, one who escapes whoredom gets caught up on the money business. If they escape the money business, they get caught on desecration. You know, in the false gospel, perverted so-called spirituality or religion. This is from the Zadokite document, the Dead Sea S Scriptures, um, as translated by Theodore H. Gaster, page 71. Ezekiel 22 has a little something to say about this right here. Money, 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 money. The root of the love of money. The love of money. But they don't have a love of the truth, but they love money. Her princes are in the midst thereof like ravening wolves after the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls. Will somebody stop the violence? Ezekiel was trying to tell you about this. John was trying to tell you. And your, your prophets, your, your, your priests and pastors for hire, you know, if you want to get a preacher or a pastor, you don't know how much you're going to pay them. Anyway, her princes are in the midst thereof like ravening wolves after the prey. Is this what's happening in the ghetto? Black on black violence? They're like ravening wolves after the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls. You know, to put a hurting on somebody. You know what I'm saying? To get dishonest gain. To get dishonest gain. To get gain. To get money, 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 money. But not, not a so-called honest way. Not a way that doesn't have to involve shedding blood or making a prey out of somebody else's soul or destroying somebody. You know, like back in the so-called days, you remember the whole crack generation? You know, and people say, yeah, well, so-and-so getting their money. And you knew how they were getting their money. You knew what they was doing. So, so John's word is true and you are untrue. You know what I mean? His word is right and they who, 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 who contradict this word, you know what I'm saying? Where are they now? It is one thing to be in bondage to a system of things. Let's understand that. It is quite another to sing that system's praises and to prophesy good things over its head. This is the whole point of it. When we're speaking about Balaam, Balaam, and we try to make the connection of Balaam to the so-called black churches, especially. Especially, especially that, that, that Margaret Sanger, she said it, right? She said that we need to know whole eugenics and the whole um, um, planned uh, Holocaust, I mean, parenthood, destruction of children, or what, abortion? What do they call it? What do they call it? Pa planned parent? Oh, planned parenthood. Pa planned parenthood. Interesting. People go there to kill their children. Uh, anyway, L like the author is saying right here, not the author so much, but um, in a kind of a Hebraic uh, Bible study kind of a sense. It is one thing, a commentary, it is one thing to be in bondage to a system of things. Like the Israelites of old were on a certain level. It is quite another. In other words, we think the Israelites were bad back in that time. To murmur and talk about Egypt, rah, 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 rah so forth and so on. Can you imagine how this lost sheep will look in this time where they sing that system's praises? They sing the praises of the system and then they prophesy good things over its head? Don't they see? Don't they know? Seeing vanity, the prophetic word picks up, 
seeing vanity and divining, <laughs> divining lies, divining wishetam, divining lies, wishet to them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. And you know the biggest one of that is your Martin Luther for king. I know that bothers some of you, you civil rights, and even somebody that we, 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 we like on other levels in a limited way, Colin Powell. We like him because at least he mentioned Haile Selassie in his autobiography as a positive influence over some in his generation. So that's, that's basically why, one of the reasons why we like him. He, he has a new book out. You know, he's one of the ones like, like uh, Cottage Cheese and Rice or Condoleezza Rice. I know we said she was like an Esther. She was like an Esther. You know what I'm saying? Because you really check her on a certain level. She know what black is. You know what I'm saying? She's proud of certain things black. And, I mean, don't sleep on that. You know what I'm saying? So if push came to shove, you know what I mean? Like Esther. Esther was a, a, one of our heroines, but it's not so much like she was willing to be that heroine. She had to be put into that sort of a situation. You know what I'm saying? So when her back against the wall, she's not going to sell out her people, or at least she's not going to sell out all of her people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can go and interpret it the way you want to. You know what I'm saying? We're going to move on with this right here. But the fact is that not only do your pastor and your preacher, you understand, they plead for Baal. You know Baal? Like Jezebel and, and Baal? You remember the story of, of, of Elijah, Eli, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, if you please, Elias? And what he went through with all the false um, prophets of Baal. So we're getting a clear idea on who. See, we're here in this Torah portion, we're going to the root of Baal. You understand? Who is Baal? Baal. Uh, who is he? What is it all about? And, and this, this eye trait, this picture, this, this cartoon, this sketch, I think it says it, it, says it all. This sketch right here says it all. The heart of. The heart of Balan. On one side is 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 is, is, uh, is Eurocentric Judaism. On the other side is is is, is Greco Romantic uh, 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 Christianity, pseudo Christianity. But where does it really get its power? Well, where is the name of God on the dollar bill, y'all? It's on the dollar bill. That's why we have to come forward to this right here again, because it's one thing. To be in bondage, you're caught up in a system, you can't do nothing about it. But you're not running around singing his praises. You're not running around saying, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. You understand? You're not, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? I mean, that is the key thing, the difference right there. Even between the Israelites, some 4,000 or so, so-called historical years ago, you know what I'm saying? And if they really did exist in history, well, you know that they were black people. They were Ethiopian Hebrew people. You know what I'm saying? And if it's just a par parable, you know what I'm saying? Well, it's still coming out of our root and our truth out of our Afro-Shemitic Ethiopia and ancient Egypt. That, that's the root of it. All of those, those with crafty and shameless dissembling as prepisters and reverend deacons look to the persons and the wealth of the suppliant and judge unjustly. In other words, they look to the fact that what? You got money to bless this church? Well, I'm not going to speak out against what I know the Lord does not like that you might be doing. I'm not going to warn you about these things and say, Still, you know, we love the sinner, but we hate the sin, and, you know, that thing you're doing is a sin. No, because, that, because you may not want to give this $20 bill here. You may not want to give some money. You know what I'm saying? So, so this is where they become themselves prophets for hire, like Belam, you understand, or Belaam, the one who has Belaam, Belaam, don't have no people, Belaam, no people, or Bela, Belaam, or Belaam. Which means confuse the people. This is what they do. The preachers and the pastors confuse the people, especially when they're not preaching the true gospel. 
You understand? They will use dissembling, shamelessly, craftily, as so-called preposters, preachers, reverends, deacons, bishops, whatever. You understand? They look to the persons and the wealth of the suppliant. They look upon the, the person and the wealth of the one who's coming to their church to hear their so-called preaching you, 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 uh, of, the, of the gad, of the gad spell, right, of the legion spell. But they judge unjustly, doing injustice to others, and all indoor, inordinately proud. In other words, they, they have no real ordinance to be proud. No real spiritual ordination. They haven't really done anything that's pleasing to the King of Kings and his Christ, to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but they walk around so proud. You know, I mean, Kura, Kura, Delishim Way. I mean, they are really, really so proud, and they are usurers, both in the sense that you probably think user, like somebody using somebody, as well as they charge usury. You understand? Who heaping up usury out of usury in their houses wrought sore harm to orphans and to widows and gave to them of their ill-gotten gain. Now, this is interesting about the orphans and the widows. I'm always amazed by this, that in the time of his imperial majesty, that the imperial government was able to, and the people, you understand, the real Christians, the Mitmanad, they were able to take care of the majority, if not all of their orphans. And now with all these Ethiopians, some of them all together, they put together, they probably have enough money as, as the emperor's Ethiopia had at that time. You understand? And still they can't do nothing. Instead what they do is sell, they're selling, you understand, they're selling Ethiopian children. They're selling black children. You know, there's such a shame about, but it all traces back to the church. In a sense, it all traces back to those who say that they know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or they know Jesus. You understand? They read the Bible. You understand? They read the Bible. The overs, but of the righteous, of the righteous, angels shall bear them through the burning river. Angels shall bear them through the through the burning river and bring them to light, to illumination, and to a carefree life. In other words, not all of, all of these worries. When we say care, we're talking about the stress of Babylon living, where runs the immortal path of the great God, the true God, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach. Earth, the same for all, not divided by all these walls and fences. Oh, this is private property. Yeah, who, 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 who made you God over this? Oh, oh, you got guns and stuff. Oh, that's how you're doing it. Okay. But there, there won't be that division will then be a fruit more abundant of its own accord. Livelihood will be held in common. Wealth unapportioned. No pauper. There's no pauper there. Why, why is there no pauper, pauper, poor person there? Because there's no rich man. Not in the sense that we know in this, in this dying, deadly world. Nor any tyrant there. There's no tyrant because there's no slave there. Nor again any great. Nor again shall be any small. No kings. No, no kings other than, and I, I love this, I, I, had to, I had to make a little commentary right here. Other than the anointed ones of God. Other than the children of God. Right? No rulers other than the children of God, but God is the ruler. We rule on behalf of our Father, you understand, in the grace as a co-heir with our brother, Yeshua HaMoshiach. But all will share in common. Now, this was taken from the, the Sibleen Oracles, uh, books of 260 to 65 and 315. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later on, because some of y'all might not even understand the real connection of that with the big picture. So the kings of the Gentiles, they exercise lordship, you know, they exercise lordship, and who else do we call lords in the real world besides Europeans, right? 
uh, foreigners, Gentiles, their Lord this, their Lord that, Lord this, their Lord that. And then we go to these, these so-called Negro churches, right? And then we put up white Jesus, and then we look at them because, oh, Lord, isn't something, why don't the psychology look at that? Why don't the psychiatrists look at that? Right? And see what, what that does to a person's psyche and self-esteem and relationship with God and truth and in spirit. But the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But Christ says to us, but ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, the ones that are truly great in the kingdom of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ, those who are truly great, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. And that's the principle, the teaching of his majesty, that the, that the king, in truth, is the first servant. You understand? Is the first servant. And if one says anything that his majesty did that was I don't want to say bad or wrong, uh, this is just to make a point here, is that he was a servant. He didn't, he didn't whip them and beat them and, and chastise them as a Gentile. So what happened? They didn't know a good thing. They bit the hand that fed them. They ran off to the Gentiles. And some of them are beginning to wake up, you know what I'm saying? But some will go down, you know what I'm saying? Some of them don't have any part in the world, in the life to come. You understand judgment at the great white throne. Luke chapter 22, verse 25 and 26. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25. Now, once again, we're going to wrap around where we started out. In all of these things, the scriptures are finally referring, finally referring us to the so-called American order, the ob, the order of cows, order out of chaos sort of things, and of those religious religios, really ghost leaders, those really, really ghost leaders, those who talk about the Holy Ghost and talk about spook God, the really ghost, right? The preachers and the prophets of Baal, or Baal, 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 on both the right and on the left, on both the so-called Jewish Right? And the Christian side of the tree, the Kabbalistic tree, who uphold and they defend this order. And who are constantly trying to bind the, uh, binding the intellect. You know, because if a person thinks about it for themselves, they say something is wrong here. But then they try to bind the intellect. You understand? With so called um, apologetics. You understand? And the spirit of others to the standards. And the spirit of others to the standards and to the world view of this fallen order. Babylon is fallen, is full of all of their pomps and pride and their so-called great swelling speeches and their enticing sermons with people dancing on the stage and a lot of multimedia presentation, just like you get when you go to Disney World. Will ye plead for bail? The question is, Will ye, knowing what you should now know and study and find the truth of for yourself, will ye plead for bail?